Hello, writers, and welcome back to Spooky Writes. My name's Kamal Onor. Now, have you ever been told that some of your characters are Mary Sues? Have you ever read a book that has a Mary Sue character in it? Well, that's today's topic, so let's get into the storm. Okay, rise. So a Mary Sue character is going to be a character who we've touched on a little bit. Typically, they're going to be the protagonist character, and the big thing that's wrong with the big thing that's wrong with a Mary Sue character is that they are unrelatable. They're too good. They're too perfect in almost every single way, and we see this a lot in fan fiction writing. And this is something that you want to avoid with your writing. You very much want to create characters who have flaws, things that don't make them perfect because we want characters who are relatable to readers. We want characters who have things that they're very good at. Again, touching, going back to my protagonist video, thinking about characters who have strengths and weaknesses. But if you find that you've already written your story and you have a character who is very much Mary Sue, like in their qualities and very much has more strengths than weaknesses, again, you want to build characters with strengths and weaknesses. But if you want to use a character who is who has a lot more strengths than they do faults, you could think about giving your character a situation where there is no one correct answer to the, to the situation and give, making them have to make a morally gray decision with, with for that character. And that's going to push that character to lean towards one way or the other. It's going to make them perhaps ch make a choice that is not quite so aligned with who they are from the beginning of the story. Again, we want characters who have changed throughout the story. We don't want characters who start from the beginning of the story and end at the same point. We want characters to go through a transformation. We want characters who are going to struggle, who are going to have issues with their decisions and are, there needs to be ramifications for their actions. They need to struggle with their decisions. So if you have a Mary Sue-like character, what you could try and do is within the plot of the story, you could try and present situations where there is no one cut and dry correct solution for that character to make. And as a reader, that's going to be more interesting. It's going to push that character to his or her limits. And so if you are very much stuck with the idea of for the sake of your story, you want your character to be absolutely pure and absolutely good and be great at everything that they come across. And maybe that's their downfall. Maybe they are very much very great at everything and suddenly they lose that ability. There are plenty of stories that touch on this idea. Plenty of stories where a character ends up in some horrific accident and is no longer able to do what he or she was once able, what was once capable of. And this, this forces that character to reflect on his or her life and for that character to reflect on what is important to him or her. And there we have that character's journey throughout the story. And this is going to make that character again, more relatable. It's going to make this character more believable as a character overall. So you very much want to avoid Mary Sue characters within your writing. But again, if you find that you've written a novel or a story with characters and you're getting feedback from critique partners, getting feedback from readers who are saying, this character feels like a Mary Sue. It feels like a self insert even. And if you're very much attached to that character, you can change this character through the editing. You can present different situations where it's not so black and white with what decision the character is taking in that stance. And maybe even have that be the focal point of the story. Have your character have to make this big decision. And at the end of the story, you could leave that ending ambiguous. I, I will be doing a video touching on the idea of endings and how to make strong endings that last with readers. So stay tuned for that. So I understand the reason why so many people want to create characters who have nothing but positives, who are nothing but strengths, who have no weaknesses, especially with self-insert characters. And again, you want to be creating fictional characters. You want to be creating characters whom you are creating from your mind, creating from your thoughts, 
self insert characters are another type of character that I would recommend that you stay away from because these characters are going to rely too much on putting yourself in the story and readers are going to pick up on that idea. They're going to know this character there, especially if you are workshopping your story, it's going to be a, a negative thing about your story. By all means, changing a character's name and making it slightly similar to yours is not going to be enough. You want to create a character who is separate from you. You want to create a character that is going to have traits of yourself, that's fine. But having a character who is an absolute self-insert of yourself within the story is something you should avoid. And that's going to very much help you avoid creating a Mary Sue character because you're going to see these characters as fictional beings, which that's what they are. They are fictional creations from your mind rather than you thinking about the perfect you as yourself, thinking about yourself as what if I had superpowers? What if I had wings? What if I was the chosen one? What if I was the one who saved the land? What if I had, what if I was brave? What if I had all the perfect skills in the world? And this is going to lead you down that road of creating characters that are, you're going to get that feedback of this character feels like a Mary Sue because you're going to say, but this character is the ideal me. This character is me if I was perfect. This is this character has no faults because that's what I want to be. And when you're creating characters, you want characters who are relatable. Again, touching on the idea of strengths and weaknesses. And if you very much feel that you want to have a self-insert character, again, give that character Op give that character obstacles that are not black and white in the response that you would have to them. Maybe there's a situation where if this character decides to do X, they're going to lose this. They're not going to be able to be in two places at once, perhaps. They have to chew, make a dire decision between saving this person or saving uh, a burning building of orphans and thinking about how can you make a character that you've already decided, I want this character to be wholly perfect, and maybe you, you have a self-insert, and this is fine for writing for yourself, but if you want to be publishing your work, if you want to be getting your work printed and in magazines and want to get your stories before a wider audience, you want to create that, re that relatability, you want characters that are going to feel live, feel alive, characters who feel lived, characters who have who have faults, characters who are not perfect all the time because again we want we want our fiction to reflect real life and we want characters who reflect people, real life people. We want characters who are going to struggle with what they're saying, who are going to feel awkward in situations, who are not always going to know the perfect thing to say, who are not always going to do what is right, even if you've created a character that is the upstanding protagonist, the character that is supposed to be doing right and is supposed to be doing what he or she believes to be right. By all means, there's room for corruption. There's there's so many things that you can do to play around with a character that you've written as a Mary Sue, and a lot of that's going to come through the editing process. Again, if you're getting this kind of feedback from your beta readers, from your writing workshop group, from people in your class, this is something that you want to pay attention to and say, have I given my character enough faults? What are the challenges that I'm giving my character? Because maybe your character has certain faults, but they're never part of the obstacle that that character is facing within the story. And so it can come down to the plot. It can come down to how your character behaves in the world and is and thinking about your story, think about your plot, Maybe your character is the greatest swimmer in the entire world. That detail doesn't matter if that character never faces an obstacle that requires him or her to use that skill or vice versa. Maybe you have a character who is deathly afraid of water. And if we don't see that in the story, if that doesn't take effect, there's no need for that to be a fault. And you're just giving your character faults for the sake of faults. So, the character's strengths and weaknesses have to be a part of the story and very much you want to create characters that are relatable and by all means you can take inspiration from yourself. You can take inspiration from people that you know personally, 
by all means, but we want to be avoiding self inserts. We want to be avoiding creating characters who are Mary Sue like in their qualities, who are perfect in every way and are pristine and can do no wrong. We want characters who who we feel concern about. Will this character make the right choice? Will this character do what he or she has promised to do? Will this character be able to to apply their moral values and what and their moral belief system overall? So very much thinking about characters and avoiding self inserts. But again, if you're writing in a particular genre that requires self inserts, again, play around with the plot, play around with the obstacles that you are giving your character, play around with your writing. Again, it comes down to editing, it comes down to just writing and then kind of dusting away the, the, the plots that don't go anywhere, the plots that don't need to be there. You wanna have stories that are tight, stories that are consistent, and especially with short stories, every sentence that you have in that story should matter. And if it doesn't, cut it. If it doesn't serve the story, if there's no reason, if, if there's a line that says, oh, my, I'm deathly afraid of water, and we never see this take place in the story, cut that out. There's no reason for that character to have that fall unless it's prevalent within the story, unless it has some effect on the overall arc of that character's journey. Maybe it's a story about a character overcoming his or her fear of water and thinking about, again, how can you create relatable characters? How can you create characters that are believable and no one is wholly perfect? And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate everyone who leaves comments, everyone who gives me a good thumbs up. It's very important for this channel to continue to grow. Very much appreciate the support that I've received over the course of making these videos. And I hope that by changing my location, it's going to, I'm going to continue to tweak and continue to evaluate ways that I can improve this channel. I very much am looking for each video that I put out to be a little bit better and just continuing to grow, continuing to tweak things. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and as always, keep it spooky. Of course, here's your bonus. Thank you so much for staying to the end. Your writing prompt for this week is going to be the storm outside battered the, the, the house and we decided to go off and do blank. So again, set your timer or you can even use last week. You can use any of the prompts that I will be giving you over the course of this channel, over the course of these videos. Anyone that you want to continue with, you can continue with last week's prompt. You can use this week's prompt and set your timer for two to three minutes, or if you feel like two to three minutes is too short, you can make it longer. Again, we're working on writing, just continuing, continuously writing for that time, and just building up the habit of writing and continuing to develop our ideas, continue to just allow ourselves to get into flow. So again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep it spooky. Ooh.